Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Burness, and before I get too far into this video, I thought it might be a good idea to explain why I'm spending so much time talking about eye movements and vision in a series about post-concussion syndrome. I think the simplest way to explain it is that vision is the only one of our senses that uses almost the entire brain in one way or another. Uh, there are many types of visual activities and eye movements, and they each use some unique and some common shared neurological pathways and groups of cells called nuclei spread throughout the brain. Because of this, depending on where the injury is in the brain, different visual function problems can show up. A specific type of visual problem can not only tell us which areas of the brain are involved, but the symptoms they create are often the reason the patient is disabled. So it turns out that eye function is a great window into brain function. Of course, there are other symptoms of PCS that have absolutely nothing to do with the eyes at all, and I'll try to address some of those in another video in the future. But for today, we'll get back to the eyes. If you're sitting at home right now, uh, suffering with symptoms of PCS, you may have noticed that you have some difficulty reading on your phone, uh, maybe scrolling on a computer, or even watching television. Now this can be due sometimes to light sensitivity that we often see in PCS, but quite often it's because your eyes are actually having a hard time following moving targets. This type of eye movement is called a smooth pursuit. We use these movements all day to maintain our gaze on moving objects in all directions. And just like when you're looking at a still target, in order to see a moving target clearly, you have to keep the image of that object on that little spot in the retina of the eye called the fovea. With moving targets, this requires a great deal of fine control of the muscles that move the eyes using feedback from several areas of the brain. When we have a brain injury, the connections between these areas can be damaged and our smooth pursuits can fail. So the eye can fall behind the target or even get ahead of it as it moves. Either way, the target will slip off the fovea, your vision will blur, and then your eyes will make a quick jumping movement called a refixation saccade to put the target back on the fovea where your vision is clearest. So let me show you what this looks like. This is what a normal vertical smooth pursuit looks like. The subject's eyes stay fixed on the target as it moves smoothly up and down. And here's a brain injured patient who has impaired pursuits. Can you see the difference? The pursuit is jerky. The jerks are the eyes cicading to catch up to the target because they just can't stay with it using a normal smooth pursuit movement. We call this a saccadic pursuit. If we look at the data, we see that 46% of this person's pursuit is actually made up of a saccadic correction. This means her eyes were off the target about half of the time. Imagine how this problem would affect trying to follow a puck on the ice, or a ball in the air, or even traffic on a road. And here's something interesting. While your eyes are making a saccade, you're blind. Your brain shuts down your awareness of what your eyes see during the saccade. You only think you can still see. What you're seeing is the stored image of what you last saw before the saccade started. I know this sounds crazy, but it's true. Think about it. If you try to hold your eyes still and turn your head left and right, you see that your surroundings are going in the opposite direction of your head. Do this a few times and you'll be dizzy. If you weren't blind during a saccade, you would see this same type of movement, except it would be violently faster, because normally our eyes can saccade to any target distance in less than a tenth of a second. The average person will do thousands of saccades in a day. If you could actually see during every one of these saccades, you'd be dizzy all the time. Okay, so hang on. If we're blind during a saccade, that means for the tenth of a second it takes our eyes to jump to a target, the brain doesn't really know where we are. So if our pursuits are impaired, the more pursuits we have to make, the more of these corrective saccades we have, and the more disoriented we become. PCS patients sometimes describe this as feeling out of it, or foggy, or in a daze. This can also drive headaches. And this is just one of the reasons why visual tasks like watching TV or being in busy visual environments like shopping malls can be too much for some PCS patients to take. The specific treatment required for this type of a problem will be different from one patient to another, uh, depending on which areas of the brain have been injured. 
Generally speaking, we'll try to use different intact visual and non-visual tasks that share some of the same brain pathways used in pursuits. This can indirectly drive plasticity in the injured pathway and make the pursuits better. Okay, so let me give you a simple example. Now, first of all, this is not a treatment recommendation. Do not try this at home. If you're watching this and you have PCS, this may not be helpful and could possibly be detrimental in your case, depending on the specifics of your injury. So again, just an example, do not try this at home. So let's say we have a hypothetical patient who has good gaze fixation for still targets, but they can't follow moving targets to the left. For the purposes of this example, let's also say they have no balance or dizziness issues. This patient would have no difficulty keeping their eyes on their thumb when it's directly in front of them but they can't follow it smoothly to their left. If we have them keep their eyes fixed on their thumb and rotate their head to their right, the eyes will be effectively smoothly moved to the left. This movement uses the vestibular system to keep the eyes on the thumb and uses some of the shared pathways for smooth pursuit to move the eyes to the left. Doing this repeatedly without working past the point of fatigue can drive plasticity in the injured pathways and improve the left pursuits. So this is just one very simple example. Each patient's treatment plan will have many exercises and stimulations that are specific to their injury. In the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about saccades, why so many PCS patients have trouble reading after their injury, and what we may be able to do about it. So thanks for watching, and I hope you tune in for the next video.